Okay. Okay, we're going. So uh, this is called. It's not called. It's called solving uh, systems with matrices. Okay. So a matrix is just a an ordered set of um, an ordered set of numbers in a, in kind of a, a block formation. Okay. So matrix. Oh, where did that go? Sorry. Um, a matrix can look like this, okay, where you have some numbers in here, two, one, or something like this. This matrix would be called a one by two matrix. So it always goes rows, rows, and columns. Rows, and then columns. Two L's in columns? You sure? Yeah. yeah. I always mess up on that. Okay. Rows, then columns. Okay. So you say row one, column two. So if you say this is a three by two matrix, that would mean you have three rows and two columns. So it might look something like negative two, five, one, six, four, zero. So that'd be a three by two matrix. Okay. Um, this type of matrix is uh, you have just a column matrix where you have numbers just going straight down, one, zero, five. That would be a column matrix, column matrix. And then you could have just a row matrix consisting of numbers like negative one, two, zero, seven, okay? This is a row matrix. Turns out you can use matrices to solve equations, okay? Which, uh, do some of you guys already know how to solve? Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you, not today, but I think on Friday, how to solve using the inverse matrix, and there's a way on your graphing calculator where you find the inverse matrix um, with your calculator and solve using the inverse matrix. But for right now, we're just gonna solve a system kind of the same way we've been doing, but using uh, using matrices and not using your calculator. So if you have a system of equations, so here's a system of equations like this, um, x, x uh, minus 4y plus 3z equals 5 and negative x uh, plus 3y minus 4z equals negative 3 and 2x or 2x 2x minus 4z equals 6 okay this is just a system of equations but I could rewrite that, um, rewrite as a matrix. Rewrite as a matrix. And uh, all you have to do is write the coefficients in one matrix, okay? So one, negative four, three. Negative one, three, negative four, whoops, and two, and negative four, what goes in here? Zero. So this is called the coefficient, coefficient matrix. Coefficient matrix. And then um, you can write the second set, the second set of numbers as a column matrix, five, negative three, six, and this thing is called the constant matrix, okay? So if you have a system, you could rewrite it as a, well, as a system of matrices, but you can rewrite it as one augmented matrix. I should aug, augmented matrix, and all you do to make this into an augmented matrix is to instead of putting this constant matrix separately, 
you put a dotted line in between the constant matrix and the aug augmented matrix. So negative 1, 3, negative 4, uh, 2, 0, negative 4. And then you go dot, 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 like that. And then you go 5, negative 3, 6. And this is the augmented matrix to this system of matrices over there. Okay? And it turns out that you can solve systems of equations using row operations and all that kind of stuff, just like we did before. Okay? So instead of having to worry about the letters, you just worry about this thing right here. It, it's really the same thing, but when you get into uh, solving it algebraically using the inverses, all you look at really is the matrix. You don't look at the, the x's and the y's and the z's and all that kind of stuff. So now I'm going to go to my PowerPoint and we're going to kind of do one together. Okay? So, uh, so where's my... Oh, a couple things that I haven't talked about yet. So, um, notes, quiz tomorrow. I should, I have to put a dot on this so it doesn't disappear. Okay, so let's, you don't know what I'm doing. What's that doing? Hello? Oh, I have to hit this, don't I? There we go. I'm going to write something on this. Hi. Okay, now I'm going to go. Uh, because if I don't write something on it, it doesn't record it. You know, it just kind of sits there. So I'm moving on to the next um, thing. So um, so here's a matrix. Here's an original matrix. And just like we did with systems of equations when we had a big system, you can interchange the rows operations that you could use. You can interchange two rows, multiply one of the rows by a non-zero constant, which we had done before with systems, and then you can uh, add a multiple of one row to another. All right. Um, let me just, so uh, add negative two times the first row of the original matrix to the third row. Could you do that? What would you get? Negative two times the first row to the, of the original matrix to the third row. What would you get in uh, you, what would you get down here? Zero. You'd get zero. What would you get here? Ne negative two, negative three. Then uh, yeah, it says add negative two times the first row. So I'm going to take this, multiply it by negative two, and I'm going to add it to this, right? Thirteen. That's correct. And negative 6 plus negative 2 makes eight. negative 8. Everything else, well, I'm not going to worry about the other two rows for right now. So that's just, so that's just showing you how you would do one type of operation. Right? Can you do that? Piece of cake? All right. So now they talk about this next thing um, called row echelon form. Okay? So... Row echelon form we already learned about really when we learned about systems of equation. It has the following property. Any rows consist of consisting entirely of zeros occur at the bottom of the matrix. Okay? So any row that so this one, see how those are all zeros on the bottom? That's so far that's good. Okay, so far this is good. This is not good. Um, well, we don't know yet, okay? Um, for each row that does not consist entirely of zeros, the first non-zero entr en entry is called it a leading one. Okay, so here's a leading one. Here's a leading one. Here's a leading one. Here's a leading one. Does this row have a leading one? No. So they're asking you which ones are in row echelon form. So this one right here, it doesn't have a leading one, so it's not in row echelon form. Okay? Um, and then it says, uh, it says for each row that is the first non-zero entry is called the leading one. For two successive non-zero rows, the leading one in the higher row is farther to the left than the leading, leading one in the lower row. So 
So which other one can you kind of cross out because of that? B, right? This is not in row echelon form because the leading one would have to be up here and any row that has all zeros would have to be at the bottom. Um, is this one in row echelon form? Yes, this is good, okay? Yes, because the leading one, leading one, leading one, you're good, <coughs> nothing higher than a one down there. Is this one in row echelon form? Yes. Is this one in row echelon form? Yes, I think so, right? Leading one, leading one, bottom row is all zero, okay? Now this thing called reduced row echelon form, I'm not gonna worry too much about it because it's really hard to get it into reduced row echelon form. But when every column has a leading one, that has a leading one, has zeros in every position above and below its leading one, then it said, then it said to be in reduced row echelon form. So is this one in reduced row echelon form? No, because there's a two above this one. See, okay? We already got rid of this one. Is this one? No. Um, is yeah. this one? This is this one, right? Anyone that has a lead, so only this one and this one are in reduce. Yeah, it's reduced, okay? Yeah, it's reduced. But, and then what's nice, if you solve a system of equation and it's in reduced row echelon form, then you would say like z is equal to three, y is equal to two, and x is equal to negative one. That's all you'd have to do, you see? When it's just in row echelon form, I know row echelon form, you'd have to say x is equal to 4, or, or what would this variable be? Maybe like w? w is equal to 4. y plus, or z plus w, 1z plus 3w is equal to negative 2. So it's a little more complicated. When you have it in this form, you have to use back substitution when it's in this form. But this form is really hard to get it into. So it's really hard to get something into reduced row echelon form. So we're not going to do that, but we're going to get it into echelon form where you have just ones at the beginning. Okay? So you ready to do one? What's wrong? Okay, we're going to do one now. Here we go. Here we go, math kids. Here we go. Okay. Oh, where did it go? Where's my... There we go. Here. Here we go. Gaussian elimination with Bowes. So the process, the process of getting something into, uh, into row echelon form is called Gaussian elimination. Let me sure, make sure I wrote the problem down wrong. Right? <laughs> I did write the problem down wrong. Um, did I write the problem down wrong? I know I did this one. Last um, minute. So we want to put, whoops, sorry, don't try yet, okay? Let's go back. So we're going to try to get this, uh, let's change colors here. Let's change the blue. So we're going to try to, so here's a system. Here's the associated augmented matrix. Everyone sees how I got from here to here? Easy enough? I just wrote the coefficients and then I wrote the constants over here. Now I'm going to try to get this thing into uh, I'm going to try to get this thing into row echelon form so it's easy to solve. Um, what did I do first? Who could tell me what I might do first? Right, so that's what, that's what I did. Okay, I added 
row one plus row. Really, what you want to try to do is first is uh, you want to get zeros. If this isn't already a one, you try to make this into a one. But you want to get zeros down below your first column. Okay. And so the way I can do that is row one. Whoops. Down here, I'm going to go row one plus row two. Right. I know you can't see that too well, but row one plus row two. I'm going to rewrite this as one, negative two, three, and nine over here. And row one plus row two gives me a nice zero. Then what goes here? One, four, and seven. I could do two steps at the same time. What should I do for this row? If I want to get a zero down here. What could I do to this? What could I do to get a zero down here where the two was? Multiply this top row by negative two and add it to three. So this row right here is going to be negative two times row one plus row three. Everyone good with that? Good. So I'm going to take this row, multiply by negative two, and add it to row three to make this into a zero. That gives me a zero here. Negative two times this. Plus this gives you negative one, okay? Negative two times this, plus this gives you negative one again, okay? And then negative two times this, plus this gives you negative one again. It's always negative one. So, uh, now what? You're not done. Add it over. You want to add row two to row three because that you want zeros below all your ones. Okay, don't worry about zeros above. That's called uh, reduced row echelon form. You want zeros below all your ones. So now I'm going to add. So now I'm going to add row two to row three. So I'm going to leave the top row low. Negative one, two, three, nine, zero, one, four. Seven and down here I'm going to go row two plus row three from the previous problem, right? So row two zero plus zero makes zero, and then nice. One plus negative one makes zero. That's nice. Four plus negative one makes three, and seven plus one makes six. Okay. So remember this is your constant matrix, and these correspond to your x, y. And z, right? Okay, so you know that three x equals six. So x equals three z. Sorry. Three z equals six. So z equals two. Then you back substitute in this equation. So you have y plus four z, and we know that. Z is 2, so 4 times 2 is equal to 7. So Y equals 1. Okay? And then we're going to go down and we're going to plug in Y. It'll be negative 1, sorry. Okay? Y is negative 1. And I'm going to plug back into this equation. I have 1X minus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 2 right, equals 9. And that gives me x plus 3 plus 6 equals 9. x equals? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's 2. Okay, x plus two plus six equals nine, so x equals one. Okay, so now I know my x, y, and z. One, negative one, and two, and those are your answers. Okay, it's just like what you were doing with the x's and y's in the equations, except you're writing the whole thing out as one big matrix instead of having the x's and y's. Okay. Um, so I just want to see what the next slide says because I forget.
Um, but I think it was something you tried. You tried. Oh my goodness, look at that. Um, okay, so you guys want to try this one? How much time? Oh, we only have 10 minutes. Um, Let's just, how about if you guys just tell me what the first steps would be, okay? If I were doing this, what would I do? Would I leave the top one alone? Yes. One, two, three, four, okay? What would, what would I do down here? Negative three times row one plus row two, right? What would I do here? Row what? Row one times two plus row three, right? And then things disappear. It's not. It's not. <laughs> well, you want me to do it? No. I did it last night. You would get zero, one, two, three. Then you'd get zero, two, five, eight. Okay. Then you would subtract, or you'd add negative two times this plus this, and you get one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, and then in the last row, you would have zero, zero, one, two. And so z equals two, x equals whatever it is, and you can do the rest, right? Okay? Okay, next slide. Okay, so, um, on the homework, where's the homework? It's the next slide. It's the next slide. I'll post this. I'll post my. So um, don't feel. Uh, hey. It says uh, there's the homework person. Okay, she's happy. Um, 